Okay, welcome to mini lecture 2.5. This will be the last lecture of this unit. And what I'm going to talk about in this mini lecture is a few of the measures that are commonly used in cognitive psychology. And then I'm going to give you one really cool example of some research in cognitive psychology that will help you as a student perform better in your classes and any other stressful situations. So the first slide I'm showing here is um, a discussion of the measure of reaction times. Remember we talked about reaction times uh, when we discussed Donder's famous study. A reaction time is the amount of time between the onset of a stimulus, when it first appears, and when the person reacts to it. Okay, so it's that gap in time. Um, how long it takes you to react to a stimulus. Not how long it takes you to detect the stimulus, but how long it takes you to react to that detection. Um, it's often measured in milliseconds, and a millisecond is when you take one second and you cut it up into a thousand pieces. Milli just means a thousand, right? And our reaction times vary quite a bit. Different people uh, react more or less quickly to different stimuli. The same person can react differently or with slower or faster reaction times to the same stimulus. And we're going to do a quick example of that that's um, sort of, there's a cartoon introduction to it here. Um, uh, I'm going to denote time by using uh, this um, measuring stick. And what I'm gonna do is hold it up for somebody and um, drop it. And we're gonna see how long it takes them to react to the dropped ruler and grab it. And we're gonna do that with both the right hand and the left hand. This will be a right-handed person. And we'll see how far does the ruler drop, which is another way of measuring reaction time, how far does the ruler drop with their right hand and their left hand. Okay, so let's cut to that now. First, I made a mistake. I said that the person we were testing was right-handed. We're working with a left-handed person. You can see here that they're using their right hand to try to grab the ruler when it drops. And when I let go, they are able to catch it when their hand is at about 12 inches. So the, the ruler fell a full foot before they were able to catch it. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing with the dominant hand, which is our left hand. And what happens when I drop it? Now they're able to catch it when the ruler is only about four inches down. In other words, they were able to catch the ruler much more quickly with their left hand than their right hand. In other words, your reaction time with your dominant hand is faster than your reaction time with your non-dominant hand. So that was reaction time. You'll see a lot of reaction time measures during this semester in our class. Another very common measure in cognitive psychology is accuracy. How accurately can you remember the words on a list or the order in which something happened? Um, and a classic example is something called the serial position effect. If you're given a list of words, your memory for the beginning of the list and the end of the list is going to be much more accurate than your memory for the items in the middle of the list. The serial position effect has big implications for how you study. What you remember, it's going to be greater from what you start studying at the beginning of your study session and at the end of your study session. What you remember from those two times of your study session is going to be more accurate than how much you remember from the middle of your study time. Um, there's also different assumptions that models make about how information is processed. Uh, sequential processing means that one thing happens after another. Um, first you have to encode, then you, uh, then you store, uh, then you can retrieve. That's sequential. Parallel processing means that things happen at the same time, right, simultaneously. Independent processes are processes that um, 
might work at the same time, might be processing things at the same time, but they work independently of one another. What one person does is, or sorry, what one process does is independent of what the other process does. Okay, I wanna give you this really cool uh, example of one of the benefits of knowing about the cognitive psychology. And it addresses a phenomenon called choking. And I don't mean choking like you have food stuck in your throat. I mean choking as in you feel a lot of pressure to do well in an exam and that pressure causes you, it trips you up, it causes you to perform more poorly than you're actually able to perform, right? And this could be athletes choke, um, public speakers choke. Have you, oh, have you taken the public speaking class where you stand up in front of the class or now in front of your computer and you have to speak to a group of people and your brain just freezes? That's choking. Choking, we now know, has to do with working memory. Working memory is how much information you can process or hang on to at the same time. So if I ask you, what's uh, 32 minus eight divided by four. Well, you have to remember, okay, 32 minus eight, and you have to remember the answer to that, and then hang on to that answer, and then pull in divided by four. That's working memory. How much information can you work with at the same time? Here's the thing. When you are under pressure, you, your working memory is compromised your performance under pressure is worse than your performance when you're relaxed. Now, why is that? Well, um, Sion Balak has shown that um, when you're under a lot of pressure, you worry, and that worry reduces the amount of working memory capacity, remember channel capacity? How much you can hold in working memory is reduced if you're worrying. Why? because the worrying fills up some of that working memory, right? So maybe normally, to use the juggling analogy, um, maybe normally you can juggle five balls or five bits of information. Let's pretend that's your working memory capacity. If you're worried, then one of your hands is occupied by worry. So now you've only got the other hand to juggle with, and maybe you can't uh, juggle as much with one hand. You don't have as much capacity. So when you worry too much, your working memory capacity drops. And when your working memory capacity is lower, you're less able to answer questions on an exam. Think about a complicated multiple choice question. You have to hold all sorts of bits of information together simultaneously. You really need a lot of working memory. But when you worry, your working memory capacity drops, just like the amount of water that can pass through a pipe drops if the pipe is full of crud. So now that you know what causes you to choke, what do we know from cognitive psychology about how to solve that problem? Well, it turns out there's an easy solution to this problem and it works so well it feels like magic. It's called expressive writing. Now, if you're worried about something, Expressive writing is just you taking 10 minutes, literally 10 minutes, to sit down and write about everything you're feeling. You just, you write without censoring yourself. You just kind of vomit it all up on the page. Everything you're worried about, you just pour your heart and soul out onto that page. You express all of your feelings and all of your anxiety on that piece of paper or on your computer file. Then after 10 minutes, you could take that piece of paper and throw it away or delete the computer file. Nobody will ever see it. That expressive writing has the ability to make your worries kind of go away. It's as if your systems express them so it doesn't need to hang on to the worry anymore. And it frees up your working memory capacity. Now, how do we know this? We know this from a terrific study, which is available in Canvas, um, done at UCLA in a math test, in a math class. Um, they, first of all, if you look at the graph on the left, you'll see that there's a strong correlation between test anxiety and final exam performance. The more anxious people were, the lower their test performance. But let's go look at the graph on the right, which is where the experimental data are. 
um, you can see that there's two lines. One that says expressive writing and the other that says control. Okay, let me go back to the beginning. Everybody walked into this exam and they were given um, an initial test, a no pressure test, to get some general idea of how much they knew about the topic. Then that was taken away. There was, that was the no pressure exam. That's the first measurement. Um, and you can see in the graph there was no significant difference in the performance of what's going to be these two groups of subjects in the pretest. Afterwards, they gave um, um, the expressive writing condition. Those folks um, wrote about all of their anxiety, right? They spent 10 minutes writing, doing expressive writing, ex explaining to a piece of paper or to a computer file everything that they were worried about. If I don't do well on this exam, my GPA will drop. Um, and my grade point average will drop and I'll lose my financial aid and da, 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 everything you worry about. The other half of the class just spent that 10 minutes studying. They didn't do expressive writing, they did 10 extra minutes of study. Then the real test came and what happened? The half of the class that did expressive writing performed a full letter grade better, actually even more, than the half of the class that didn't do expressive writing. The half, of the half of the class that didn't do expressive writing, their anxiety got to them and their performance dropped. Choking under pressure, we have a solution thanks to cognitive psychology. You don't have to choke under pressure ever again. Use this expressive writing technique before you take a GRE exam or a midterm or a final and your performance will increase. Yeah, that's all I'm going to tell you about today in uh, the lecture for the second unit. So now it's time for all the students in my class to uh, do the lab and then the practice quiz and then the graded quiz. Okay, thanks. Bye.